Welcome everyone. Thanks, Manish. Welcome everyone to our Fairfield County um, Tableau User Group 2022 Q2 event. We've been meeting quarterly in the past uh, two years, um, and we really talk about like what's new and also do the like TC 2022 recap. And this time we're going uh, to invite Adam Ware and to give us a recap and highlights on the TC 2022 release an announcement, and then we'll follow by a networking session um, facilitated by our Tableau user group leadership team. And then at the end, we'll have a Kahoot quiz and we'll um, give the swags for the top three win winners. And for those who uh, did win the game, please make sure that you send your email um, address to us. Awesome. Um, Manisha, go to, yep, that's the agenda that we're going to have recap, networking, and Kahoot game. And over, uh, this is our leadership team, and Maria and Sarah won't join, uh, are not able to join us today. Thanks to you, Adam. Thanks, Kathy, and good to see you all. Thanks for, for taking out the time to, to join us. Uh, how many of you saw, uh, got to saw, see some of TC22? Of, uh, raise hands and... Adam, I'm in not Team sure. Zoom. I think your voice is really... Oh, is this, is this any better? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, good. Sorry about that. Yeah, the microphone had to be close by, I guess. Um, yeah, how, how many of you went to TC22? Show of hands or virtual hands. Or join, join, either went to in person or joined. You could just weigh in in the chat. One chat. Looks like nobody did. Nope, nobody did. Okay, so then I'm, I'm starting from scratch. So I could say that anything happened there. And that everyone would believe me. Um, I actually did not go in person. I joined. I've, I haven't gone to a conference for, wow, it's been, I think my last one was in 2012, a long time ago. Uh, but I've joined everyone either live or, you know, caught up on the sessions afterwards. They've had, they usually have a ton of content. They had, they have a good amount of content this year, maybe, maybe more in prior years. You could always search prior years on YouTube if for whatever reason you're interested. Um, but this year, you know, as always, they do have a lot of, uh, uh, important announcements um, and interesting things. So we'll, we we have a few slides that we'll uh, show you and share that include some links. Um, so the the keynote uh, about the promise of data. They had a rock concert. Mark Nelson, the I would say new CEO, but it, it's been about a year, right? Or is it less than that? Uh, talked about the data skills gap, uh, the Tam Tableau Foundation, and all the good work they're doing. I think there was. Um, I forget which uh, healthcare organization, char charitable healthcare organization, went uh, talk there, but they talked about work they're doing internationally and especially in the Ukraine. Um, there were also stories from JetBlue, Standard Chartered, Feeding America, which they, they was you know poignant, of course. Um, talked a lot about the cloud focus, uh, the accelerators, and we'll get to all the details a little bit later. Um, the exchange, the new Tableau exchange, Slack integration, some data management features, and an interesting stat, which was that I think Francois Eisenstadt, the director of project, product management, said 70% of people don't have access to their data. So um, you know, people who are making decisions in organizations, uh, hopefully not the, the CFO or hopefully not medical decisions, but you know, people, you know, data has been locked away in, in a lot of organizations for a while, and what a lot of us who you maybe have grown up on digital businesses take for granted is that data is always available, but really, you know, we don't realize that it's not. So that was a, I wouldn't quite say humbling statistic, but that's the only word that comes to mind right now. Um, some, a lot of features, the predictive analytics modeling capabilities, they spent a fair amount of time on, which was good, and then general data model capabilities. And then the last few minutes, the uh, something that I've always said, I wish they would do more with this. Uh, instead of that little gray box that was a data summary, which I think is probably still there, and they now have what's called the data orientation pane, um, and, and then also the image loading, which got some applause. So it was a pain to put images into Tableau easily, so now they have um, you know, dynamic images, I should say. Static images is pretty easy, but now the dynamic ones uh, are make it much easier. All you need is a field uh, with URLs to the images, and it, and it works pretty well. 
Um, and then Dev's on stage. Um, always great and interesting. I actually didn't get a chance to watch enough of that uh, to comment much more. And then um, the keynote with Hannah Fry, a professor of math at uh, spatial analysis in London, uh, how to predict real-world phenomenon, the Iron Viz, which is always entertaining, and uh, Slalom hosted a virtual session, Accelerate Your Environmental Performance with Tableau. And it's you know, one of those things where you have a dashboard, maybe it's been in production for a while, and you need to just think about uh, how could we improve it. Or you have a new dashboard that you're rolling out to a lot of people, and it's mission critical, and you want to think about improving it. So that's definitely an, an important one to attend. Uh, can we jump to the next slide? I'm going to put my... Um, Right, so Tableau Cloud was called Tableau Online, so you know it's it's a name change, but it's not just a name change. Um, you know, the the software as a service platform model, they're you know obviously fully committed to, as many other companies are. And now you can publicly share dashboards. So instead of before, you would have had to open up licensing and figure things out. They're they're making it easier for you to publicly share dashboards um, from your internal server, uh, or sorry, from from your online site. Um, so that's that's. You know, it sounds small, but it's a, it can, could be considered a bigger thing for, for companies who were using Tableau Public before but wanted to you know, have more control over certain things or better data refresh schedules or whatnot. Um, ability to create region-specific sites for compliance and performance, that's, that's really important when you think about GDPR and, and other things. Um, and then there will be more integrations with Salesforce Cloud in the f service in the future, in the well, in, in the future as well. Um, so Tableau Advanced Management, uh, oh, someone's in the waiting room, that's good. Um, Multi-site management, uh, encryption keys, activity log, admin insights. I've been reading off the slide a little bit for that one because I, I honestly haven't delved in, into the, the management piece, but I'm sure if anyone you know has questions about that, if uh, I can't either find the answer or someone else on, in the leadership team doesn't know the answer offhand, we can you know get back to you about it. So we'd be happy to talk about any specific Topics, um, the Tableau Exchange, the accelerators that are built into starter workbooks, um, is a good place, good starting point. You know, in, in in some cases, you know, it's easier to start from scratch than it is to start from um, accelerator or an existing dashboard. Um, but you know, there are certain things that are you know trusted dashboard extensions and connectors um, that are just easier than reinvent you you writing from scratch as well. So it's, it's a balance. Um, and you know the fact that these things can integrate and you can then visualize data more efficiently is, is always a good thing. Um, and then also uh, comment about Slack. Um, Tableau and Salesforce are offering an enterprise cloud software bundle that will link Tableau Cloud with Slack. Um, so usually it's more for the enterprise customers um, and you know Slack integration, making things collab collaborating more easily is always always a good thing. Uh, any questions, comments? I think we can jump ahead then. Uh, the predictive uh, model builder. Um, is so the, there's a scenario planner which makes what if analysis easy. And this is part of the, I think they called it uh, business decisions modeling, whatever, uh, there's a term that they use, business analytics, um, a broader portfolio that Tableau has been, been talking about for a couple of years now. So it's native in the Tableau platform. You can train predictions in your dashboards and, uh, and also in Tableau Prep. Um, there's now one dimension to many fact tables and the and the Tableau Prep, uh, and I think also in Tableau, the one dimension to many fact tables. Um, but yeah, no, very good to be able to have um, something where you can create and train your predictions right in your dashboards. Useful, useful stuff. Uh, any other questions, comments on this one? Moving along, so this was one of the things with uh, Feeding America. This was the, I think, uh, narrative science acquisition. Uh, their product manager came up and said um, that talking points are, are um, is that, was it the narrative, AI-powered insights, or do they call it stories, storytelling? Um, it's available in Tableau, Tableau Cloud now, expected later this year in Tableau Server. Um, it has some good settings for customization and formatting, but um, I would think additional testing is needed for, for usability. One thing to you know sort of note is 
you know, you can't count on people to read all that text. So, I don't know, for me, some spacing would be better, and, and also. Hey Adam, I think we will lost you. You're on mute. Sorry, somehow I lost the phone connection. Um, where did I leave off? In America, narrative science. I think we missed last 15 seconds or 20 seconds or so. Okay. Um, yeah, so the brevity setting. So they do have a brevity setting, but um, that's not always... Uh, you might need to customize a little bit, basically, would be the takeaway from this. But it's a good start. You know, I think having... So it's a lot better than captions. If anyone's ever turned on captions on a data viz, it's just basically a, a machine spit out of these are the fields you're using, these are the filters you're using. So this is a step in the right direction, but definitely still needs some some customization. Um, and it could be very good for starting point for you know people who are not big, uh, you know, people who are not analysts, people who are not used to data data analysis. Uh, any questions about about that one? If you have any questions, you can also type it in on the chat yeah. window so we can always get back to you on yeah, that. Definitely feel free to type it in. Um, right. So this was one of the, uh, this was the data orientation pane. If you click next, um, the, the three, I, I sort of cut that, that, that whole big side pane. So it used to be a small box, just this size, but I cut it into three sections. Um, so you can keep clicking, uh, Manisha. Thanks. So, right, that's the top of it, that's the bottom, that's the middle. So the data orientation pane said, hey, I have three outliers that were found. Andrew Beers, and Dev's on stage. He started in 2004, Francois and started, started in 2010. So the average employment length of that person is higher than other values. So these sort of automated insights are now in the data orientation pane, just to sort of, again, get you oriented. That's what they call it, data oriented. So um, again, neat feature, helpful to, to novices, Helpful even to experts who you know maybe don't have time to prepare just before a meeting or you know the data refreshed and you know something new popped in. It's just another place where you can find some insights, um, and, and it gives you a good summary, especially because there are so many different um, different fields that you may have built in your in your views. This will sum it up pretty well as a starting point. Uh, so. It, that's the data orientation pane. Next up is the data model improvements. So investing in a, in a logical data layer that uh, will enable all of us to make more robust data models, take advantage of relate, easier to re use relationship features that they added in the last couple of years, and then also some performance benefits in certain cases. Um, so more complex data models. Uh, and then also table extensions in Web Data Connector 3.0. Um, has been redesigned to make it drag and drop easier. Um, I, I've had issues with the web data connector in the past, so I'm just glad to hear that they're investing in that. Um, and then table extension, where you can bring tools like R and Python right into Tableau's data model. Um, and someone on stage, the one of the dev, Nathan, used a custom script to transform and analyze tweets and then bring back a data frame to analyze the Tableau. So useful for getting to those external services. Uh, the next one, eight. so ask data improvements. So phrase builder uh, was a guided way to get insights using natural language. Um, and there'll be some additional improvements that use their machine learning to have the recommendations, interpret intent you know, and make additional suggestions. Um, more flexibility to look at the data source, some phrase recommendations. Um, Tableau made a change to this feature by allowing a Tableau user, viewer license to use the Ask Data feature. And that increased, of course, the number of users because uh, people could make, make use of the feature because uh, previously, I guess, it was the, the only the Explorer license. But again, Tableau, in the past, you know, years ago, the big complaint was they didn't embrace the enterprise licensing model and they didn't give discounts. Well, now they're putting more features into the viewer level because they realize that it's important and it allows them to be competitive and then also 
um, follow a Salesforce model with the Prime Sign Analytics the way that they deliver that. So it's a, it's a good feature um, to add to a dashboard to answer additional uh, analytics business business cases for the augmented analytics approach. We just have a couple more slides. The virtual connections on the next one. Um, this can really help with data governance and security of the Tableau's platform. So there's a couple of links that uh, will include uh, with this if you're interested. So it's a, it's a way to have centralized real level security and easier management of data extraction permissions. And uh, was that a typo there? Was that actions? Uh, we might want to just want to look at the comments, Lisa or Kathy, before we send it out. No, I'm happy with it. I don't think it understands that. But it, um, uh and then yeah we talked about the, we talked about all the oh the image role feature yeah, i talked about that already um i made an orientation for the, for the uh, prep enhancement so i didn't talk about uh row numbering you know simple thing but it's been excel for years um the quick null filling and then multi-row calculation so definitely some useful additions there uh, do we have a, a lot of tableau prep users on the call if anyone want to talk about their use case Either live or to chat or just raise their hand and say, Yes, I used to have up. Um, but yeah, there, there's a blog article that we'll put a link to for more information about product innovations there. Um, oh, right. One thing I forgot to mention about the data orientation theme is it, you know, in addition to having the descriptions of listed data sources and fields and the summary of how the data is filtered and links to some external resources where possible. Um, that you did in the past, you used to have to make a custom little eye box uh, circle that you hover over whatever you fit in the tooltip. And then now they have this in tooltip, but this is like a built in feature that, that adds more information and can even dynamically update when the user selects a specific biz or a mark. So something that had to be custom built in the past was now just into the uh, data orientation thing, which you can dynamically update when. when selecting a visual mod. So it's not just another feature just thrown in there, but it actually integrates well. Um, and then the next slide about Tableau Exchange, you can today go to exchange.tableau.com and we'll jump ahead after two slides. So again, it lets you add features to your dashboards using web applications. Uh, you can go to the next one. Uh, enables access of additional databases and applications. And there's a link to the connectors there. And you can see a, a screenshot to the right. The accelerators are you know, built by either Tableau or trusted partners, so it's not like you're using some third party tool that's going to go away necessarily. Um, and you know, these things are built with security and data governance in mind. So, Tableau is not just allowing a free for all platform, but they are actually doing some sort of vetting uh, the way it sounds. You know, looking at each one and read all the terms and privacy policy, but it sounds like Tableau is doing some vetting. Um, Hey, Adam, um, I haven't used this Tableau Exchange yet. Uh, maybe this is a new feature that is coming in, uh, but is it somehow linked to Tableau Public or they are completely two separate uh, platforms? So Tableau, they're, they're separate. I think Tableau Public can make use, make use of Tableau Exchange, but good question because Tableau couldn't use, I thought there was an issue with Tableau Public using web data connectors or there was some catch with Tableau Public that hopefully Tableau Exchange solves. So I would imagine that you could use this in Tableau Public, but I'm not completely sure it's a good question to follow up on. Um, but yeah, they are two separate platforms. And the exchange is like plugins and additional features, and Tableau Public is if you want to publish something for anyone in the world to see. Excuse me. Makes sense. Um, next up, dashboard extensions, same thing. You know, web, web applications that you can build in, additional visualizations and, and uh, things to make it easier build custom certain custom charts. I don't know where I would go with certain of these, but it's a good, good starting point. And then same thing, the accelerators on the next slide um, are pre-built dashboards. Um, so, you know, good starting point, but you know, definitely some things to customize in here. Maybe you shrink up some of the space on the top and work on the drop downs. But um, good to, you know, you could literally just download it, take the bottom right chart, plunk your own data into it or just see how it's built. Say, oh yeah, you know, to refresh your memory on how to build it. But yeah, I'm happy to talk through any of these. If, if anyone downloads it, um, I'd be happy to, to walk through it with you. Uh, next is the Web Data Connector 3.0. Oh, 
better developer experience for creating connections. Um, and I haven't used the entire data connector. Um, so I'm glad to see they're adding some more features and hopefully some robust robustness to it. And then that's that's it. So spring 2023, so they're moving up to PowerPoint State by a couple months. And uh, we still have more to this event, but our next event, I would, I would imagine August or September, uh, we'll get the leadership team and I will get together in a, in a few weeks. And also you're welcome to you know, join in our efforts, make suggestions, of course, this is not about the, the, well, the four of us on now, but the six of us, um, you know, happy to welcome all ideas and opinions, topics. If you wanna be a speaker, that's better than me or any of the leadership team speaking would be having people from the audience contribute as well. Um, so happy to have your, your input. And uh, yeah, so with that, I think next is our net networking. Yeah. So we're gonna do some breakout rooms and some facilitated stuff. Yep. So we'll create three different breakout rooms and all of you would be randomly assigned to each of these breakout rooms. And then as part of the discussions that we will have in each of these rooms, uh, you can probably start with a quick introduction of how familiar you are with Tableau and what you have been doing in Tableau. Uh, and then you can probably come up with your own thoughts on a topic that you would like to discuss with that group. Uh, or we can probably uh, propose some of the ideas that we have uh, as part of the leadership team as well. So this is my first time creating the breakout room. So I'm hoping that everything will go smoothly. Uh, let me give it a try. Ready? Yeah. All right. So Adam, I'll assign you, Kathy, and Monisha to each of those three rooms that I'm creating. And then I'll uh, randomly assign people to those rooms. Okay? Yeah, thanks. That's great.
Welcome back, everyone. What do you all think? Like eight to 10 minutes was too short? I mean, it was, uh, I think we, just, we were just like three or four people in the room. So 10 minutes was good enough for us to actually know each other. And uh, there were some discussions which uh, got broke like in between, but then I, I think we can connect on LinkedIn or it, it's a good way. Like it was a nice session for me. Yeah, I think we can, next time we can carve out some more time and maybe lesser number of groups. We'll, we'll play around with that, but yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think it worked really well. Maybe start the first group 14 minutes, the next group 12 or 10, and then the next group because <laughs> everyone's talked out. But uh, <laughs> no, I, I really like, the, I like that format because we get to meet everybody a little bit. Awesome. All right, looks like one group is still having some, some discussion. I don't see everybody here. Uh, no, nope, I can see everyone now. All right, I think the next topic, Monisha, that we have is that Kahoot quiz. So yep. let's uh, round it up uh, with that quiz. Yep. Is my screen already shared? Can you see my screen? No. Can you try sharing okay. again? Okay. Okay, so hey everyone. So this is the Fairfield Tableau uh, Kahoot quiz. Uh, it's a short quiz. Um, if you can just go on kahoot.com and then you can just put this uh, game pin and then we can start our Kahoot quiz. Just go on www.kahoot.it and just have to put this game pin. Please let me know if anyone is having trouble in joining the quiz. Okay, I can see no one now. Maggie is there. Who is there? Okay, we have six people right now. Anyone else who's still trying to join? Okay, I think I'm gonna start now. So here is your first question. Tableau Online has now become. Okay, there is one person who has answered. Okay, awesome. So there are five people who have answered it correctly. That's nice. So now it has become Tableau Cloud. Uh, I think this was the first uh, presentation slide which uh, Adam had covered in the in this session today. Okay, so yep, okay. Google is on the top, that's awesome. Let's move to the next question. Dimension values are the values of specific characteristics or attributes. It's true or false. You have 10 more seconds. Quickly. Okay, so there are three people who got it correct. It's true. Tableau uh, has the dimension values. Are, the, are those values of the specific characteristics or attributes? And then we have measures, which are the numeric values. So let's see the score quickly. Oh, Noha has jumped on the top. It's awesome. Uh, next question. Which of the following is not a Tableau product or suite? Tableau server, Tableau desktop, Tableau workbook or Tableau public is not a Tableau product. I just want to focus on that. Uh, 
Okay, so three people have got it correct. So yes, Tableau workbook is not a Tableau product and rest are all the Tableau products which are being offered. Let's quickly see the score. Noah, you are on fire, awesome. Next question, again, a true and false. Tableau model builder enables user to create predictive models using clicks, not code. Is it true or false? Just to give you a hint, this was also covered by Adam in today's presentation. Okay, so three people got it correct. Yes, it's true that now Tableau Model Builder, that's a, like a new uh, product which they have launched, um, a new feature, sorry, uh, which enables user to create predictive models using clicks and not to the code. Okay, so next, this is the last question. In which platform can Tableau users share their data visualizations online at no cost? It's Tableau Desktop, Tableau Reader, Tableau Server, or Tableau Public. This is the last question, so put your answers quickly. Awesome, four people have got it correct. It's Tableau Public. And Nikain. You're on third position, congratulations. Gokul, you're in second position. And the first position is for Noah. It's awesome. Congratulations, awesome. guys. Congratulations. And we have runner-ups, Ashwarya and Maggie. Thanks, everyone. And nice to see you guys. See you in <laughs> Next time we'll uh, restructure our networking session to make it more smooth. Um, yes. See you next uh, quarterly meeting. I think you need the uh, email IDs, right? For, yes. for the we, yeah. um, yep. Could you please um, send your email address? I mean, send an email to Manisha. Yep. I mean, maybe you provide your um, email yep. address. In the I app. can, yes, I'm just putting it right now. And if you registered um, through the event page, then you will receive a like recap email from us probably next week as well with the recording and also some uh, information if you missed the email address that Manisha shared. Yep, and these are some of the additional ways that you can connect with our group. Uh, LinkedIn uh, link is mentioned here. Uh, how you can follow us on Twitter, how you can write direct emails to us is also mentioned here. So let's stay connected. Look forward to Q3 event now. Thanks all for joining. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.